Hey ihr Lieben, what's good? What's going on? It's Yeshi at yeshobeuten.com and in this video we're going to talk about the seven signs that you are in spiritual warfare. Now I have read and heard of a lot of people that say things like, well I don't believe in spiritual warfare or in Christians needing deliverance because it scares me. Or people say, well I tried this deliverance and I got sick or I tried deliverance and prayed for healing but nothing happened or or all hell break loose and that's why I don't believe in deliverance. First of all I would like to address that because that in itself is just super not logical and doesn't make sense at all. Like how can you not believe in something that scares you? How can you not believe in something that then happens? Or how do you believe that it is sin or bad when you know then stuff happens you know what I mean see here are the seven signs that you are in spiritual warfare and maybe they even prove that you need deliverance so the first sign that there is spiritual warfare going on in your life is temptation now temptation in itself is not a sin don't get me wrong but we know that Satan as the tempter you know he walks around like like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And maybe you start doing deliverance, maybe you start going in the direction of following Christ more and more and then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose, you're confronted with temptation like never before. And you're like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Well, surprise, <laughs> the enemy knows your calling, he sees the calling on your life and he tries to steal that from you through temptation and lead you to sin. Sign number two that you're in spiritual warfare might be that all of a sudden you're attacked physically like never before. You experience symptoms like never before. You go through stuff, pain, aches, whatever, like never before. Maybe you just start a deliverance. Maybe you open up your heart to Jesus or, or something along those lines. And all of a sudden the enemy is unleashing hell on earth and just attacks you physically. That might be a sign of spiritual warfare. Number three can be relational struggles. Again, you know, you open up your heart to Jesus and maybe your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or even friends or family all of a sudden <laughs> seems like turning against you for whatever reason, maybe for no reason. And you're like, what's going on? Not like you said something, you did something necessarily, but all of a sudden just no matter what you say, no matter how nice you are, it's just always a fight. But see, it could be that the enemy is stirring his demons in people to attack you and trying to pull you down emotionally, pulling you down spiritually in your anointing and just trying to discourage you. That might be the enemy trying to attack you and pull you away from God. Sign number four that you're in spiritual warfare is fruitlessness and passivity. See the Bible says that when we believe we have to have signs following us like that we heal the sick, that we cast out demons, that we pray in new tongues, that we, you know, just follow Christ and do the stuff of Jesus. And it also says that a good tree brings good fruit and a bad tree brings bad fruit. And that if we love God, truly love God and truly follow God, we're bringing fruit. We're bringing fruit for Jesus and for the kingdom. So if you do not bring fruit as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, something is wrong, something is off. Then you seriously have to ask yourself, what's going on here? What is the enemy blocking? Why is the enemy blocking this? What am I supposed to do? What's God's purpose for me and for my life to bring fruit and to do the things of God? Maybe you also find yourself in a situation where you're just totally frustrated and you're passive and you, you see like you, you're not making any progress. Maybe you feel totally passive and there's just no walk of God in your life, like there's no you know, grease, you know, that anointing, that fire, that pa passion that keeps you going for Jesus, it's just not there. See, that is a sign that demonic activity is going on in your life, because you ought to be on fire. You ought to be passionate for Christ. You ought to bring fruit for Jesus. That's what the Bible says. See, the Bible encourages us over and over again to bring fruit and to, to be productive for Jesus. So if we're not, something must be blocking it. Obviously, we have our free will to do it or not do it, but maybe there's something spiritual going on that is standing in between us and fruitfulness. It might seem like a blockage where you, you try to pray, you try to do something, you try to read the Bible, try to pray, and it's just not going through. It's just like you're, uh, you're just hitting a wall. 
there might be something demonic going on. Sign number five, that you're in spiritual warfare can be accusations. Maybe accusations of others, maybe filled with half-truths, maybe just out of the blue something totally random where you're like, what in the world? I've never done stuff like that. Maybe this stuff comes up after you started walking with God or stuff happened in your life, God's starting to move in your life and the, and the people around you. And all of a sudden, you know, these accusations come and you're like, no, I have not, or no, that's not 100% true. It's just demons trying to divert your passion and your motivation to go forward with God. See, they tried the same with Jesus. If they tried it with Jesus, they're going to try it with you. So the sixth point that I have here goes hand in hand with relational struggles. This one would be emotional attacks. See, the enemy loves to play with our emotions. You know, that's one of the areas where he really can get us. And I just want to encourage you to stand against it. It's the enemy trying to attack you with whatever emotions he's throwing at you. Maybe there's something unclean in your emotions where you still need healing and deliverance. I know I needed a lot of healing and deliverance in my emotions. In my late teenage years, in my early 20s and throughout my 20s, I had to get through a lot of emotional healing and deliverance because I was just so messed up from my family line and from stuff I experienced as a teenager. I just needed a lot of cleansing in my emotions. So if there is something going on and you feel like a whirlwind is going on in your emotions, there might be spiritual warfare going on in your life. The last point I would list as a proof for spiritual warfare would be deception. Now obviously deception can go two ways. You being dece deceived or people deceived attacking you, which obviously goes hand in hand with some points that I already mentioned. But where people believe I have a ministry to destroy ministries. And believe me, there are Christians that believe that. That think, no, I believe this, and therefore I have to be the keyboard warrior on the internet and even in the real world and have to tell everyone about this minister and everything he does wrong and everything he preaches wrong and how he looked at me was just so of, not of God. And, and then he also said this and that was not in the Bible. And you know, all this stuff. God will never anoint you to destroy someone else's ministry, never. Yes, Jesus came to bring the sword. Yes, Jesus came to bring spiritual divide, positive godly divide, to divide between good and evil. But he never came to destroy a godly God-given ministry, an anointed ministry. When the disciples asked, well, we see these people cast out demons in your name, shall we stop them? Jesus said, no, well, if they're not against us, they're for us, just let them do it, you know bless them. Before I give you kind of like a solution and maybe an application to those all these points, I want to direct you to my blog post that I wrote about this very topic. In this blog post I go in way more depth and I'm explaining about even seven spiritual weapons that God gave us and you know more tactics that we can use to seek deliverance and healing especially when we're attacked and are in war spiritual warfare. So I'm going to link that link in the description below can hit that up and just go through the blog post, maybe jump over the part that I just gave you and just go in more detail about the applications. Here's what you can do if you find yourself in spiritual warfare. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Pray. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. You're not alone. Holy Spirit is with you. Jesus is with you. He died exactly for the, those things. He gave his life so that you would have freedom. He gave his life so that you could go and push through those things. When those things come up, it's a good sign. You're probably heading in the right direction, okay? And there is freedom. When I started out with Jesus, when I started to get really radical and, and real with Jesus and said, I wanna go in full-time ministry, guess what happened to me? I started getting cancer. I was diagnosed with cancer. So God told me, fast and pray, fight and trust me. That's what I did. And then after so much time, after I did have an operation, they took out the organ, but what did they find? They found a burned out tumor cell. There was a little bit living cells still left there, but I didn't need any radiation, I didn't need any chemotherapy, and it was burned out just as we prayed. By the way, I made a video about this, you can watch it over here. But what I'm saying is, sometimes when we start going for God, and when, sometimes when we do the right things for Jesus, the enemy doesn't like it. The enemy is not going to stand on the side and cheer you on. Believe me, he's going to put everything he can into your way to slow you down, to steal your time, to kill your energy. He is the thief, 
that comes to kill, steal, and destroy you will just try to destroy you, you and your ministry. So, when you find yourself in these spiritual warfare scenarios, there are weapons and there are tactics you can apply. Go in the blog post, read through it. I made more videos about that here on my YouTube channel and it would go beyond this video here right now. But there is deliverance for you. There is freedom for you. Let me pray for you here real quick. Jesus, Father, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the listener right now. Father, I thank you that you are mighty and that you are you're so worthy, you're so awesome, that you're so much more powerful than anything the enemy could throw against us. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for freedom right now, for a touch, a mighty touch for the listener right now. Anything the enemy threw against you, I come against it right now. In Jesus' name, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you for sufficient angels right now that would go and assist now in spiritual warfare, that would disarm the enemy right now, that would take all his weapons and his armor away and would as your bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper every arrow every dart through thrown against you or me even shall not prosper but be sent back to the sender in jesus name and i release healing and freedom right now in jesus name any attack has to re be reversed right now in jesus name complete deliverance every attack every demonic lie i rebuke and silence right now in jesus name and I release healing and deliverance and freedom in Jesus' mighty name. I release the blood of Christ over you right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you, I glorify you, and I thank you for what you do. I praise you and I bless what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please share it with someone that could really be blessed by this as well and after you do maybe you want to check out one of these videos that are popping up here on the screen right now in any case i'm going to see you in the next video and always remember keep your eyes on the prize be blessed